The New South Wales government has unveiled a radical solution to the water crisis. It plans to tap into an abandoned reservoir under the city. $95 million will be spent on a state-of-the-art water recycling facility in the heart of Sydney.
My name is Natasha Warner and I've worked in news and current affairs for well over 10 years. I knew that I wanted to tell stories, I knew I wanted to communicate to the public and um, that looked like the perfect place for me. The New South Wales Minister for Water and the Environment has been under sustained fire for 12 months now. Sydney's water reserves are at an all-time low. We are a progressive government and in the face of climate change we need to look at all possibilities and recycling water is definitely the way of the future. I first came across a story which was focusing on the government that had just announced some water recycling plans and they wanted to use abandoned underground tunnels in one of our you know, biggest rail systems. Thousands of people pass through here each day, not realising the state government's solution to the water crisis is beneath their feet. The plan is to build recycling infrastructure to make use of millions of litres of water trapped in disused train tunnels. I didn't realise how vast they were. There's virtually a, a whole other city underneath us. Welfare groups say the tunnels are a refuge for Sydney's homeless. Building underground water recycling infrastructure would leave them with nowhere to go. The new homeless concerns are likely to cause another roadblock for the government's water crisis solution. In a similar scenario in the US, hundreds of homeless were recently evicted from underground tunnels. It caused a public relations nightmare. You can quickly see why the government's having so much trouble evicting the homeless. I mean, trying to navigate through this maze of dark tunnels is hard. But trying to find people hiding in here is virtually impossible. The Water and Environment Minister says there is no evidence of anyone living in Sydney's tunnels. He says if Labor wins the election, the water solution will proceed. After the initial fanfare, the story dried up. It was like the whole thing never happened. That's when alarm bells went off in my head. Things just don't disappear. Whenever something's not spoken about, I, I've got to ask why. That's my job as a journalist. Cheers, John. Happy birthday. My birthday wish. What's your birthday message? Just greet him. What do you want? What do you have to say? John, John. you love. Hey, John, over there. Actually, I can tell you a story about John. You guys may not know this one. It was way back in 1991. My name's Steve Miller. I'm a uh, TV cameraman. I've been working in news and current affairs since the mid 80s. It just started and they sent us the first Gulf War, so we had to phone home to the office to John, who was the news director at the time, and said, send us more cash. We need to get some gas masks and chemical suits and stuff. So they sent us like 10 grand, and we thought, we've got this cash in our hand, we're going, fuck it, let's spend it on piss, right? And the air raid sirens, everyone else is fucking pulling their masks, and we just gone, oh, fuck it. <laughs> you kind of get married to the job, so the people you work with, they end up coming like family members. He's an incredibly handsome young man, but he's not very really good at his job. Come here, Tangle. I'm talking about the time in the States where we went two weeks, and you went without headphones. Remember that? And did anyone notice? No one noticed. He's a genius. That's how good I am. I need to hear it, you feel it on the nose. When you get that gang on the road, when you get Stephen Tangles out on a shoot, they're just... Uh, they're professional, but they're also kids. At the end of the day, they like to muck around and have a bit of a laugh. Um, I remember Natasha, she was at another network, and uh, then a couple of years later, they uh, brought her across to us. First impression, just another, you know, young person coming in, getting paid too much money, hadn't really proved herself, but, you know, she was the next big thing. Hey, oh, yeah. hey Pete! Pete. Business meeting, so production Pete. meeting. <laughs> production meeting. Talking about producing uh, some. Uh, well, see you, man. Yeah, produ <laughs> is that? Yeah, you better turn that off soon. Mate. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Seriously, Pete. Pete. Hey? The one that got away. I'm not away. I'm here. Oh, haven't we done that story before? <laughs> Come in here, mate. Do a bit of <laughs> Pete and I, we had an interesting working relationship. He was very determined. 
in the way he would do his job and I was very determined in the way I would do mine. Sometimes that would work well together and sometimes it would sort of cause a bit of friction. Whenever her, the, her name came up, the subject was changed pretty quickly. You know, when you think back on it now, you sort of go, oh yeah, there was something going on there. I came across a YouTube video which showed some youths uh, defacing and sort of vandalising areas around the tunnels. Jeff, did you do this? You are fucking kidding me! Fucking teach me a lesson then, eh? I fucking will. This is why I think of your shit, MK. Um, within that clip itself, there was something unknown. Quite clearly, though, there was something there in the tunnel. Look, what's that? What was that? Shut up. Fuck, what the fuck was that? They're still here. Oi! Just give me the torch. Chef, come on, Just let's get out of here. Just give me the torch, you bitch. No, don't. It's cool. Come on. It's fucking cool. Oi! You think you can tag on my fucking work, do you? Fuck, Seth, come on. We've got to fucking... Watch that, you fuck. Seth. Seth. Once I saw that clip, I thought this is a story I can go to John with. You know, finally it's got some strength. Since when does a decent journalist use YouTube as research? It was a good clip, but at the time I thought, she's crazy. When I pitched the story to John, he put Pete on this. What that meant was Pete had an upcoming job and story in China, which he was very, very passionate about and I had to give him the news that he was taken off the story. I first heard about the tunnels being a potential story for us, just as we were prepping up actually to go to China with Pete. Hey mate, uh, there's a focus chart there somewhere. Oh, yeah. Can you just hold it up for us? Yeah, yeah, no worries. Beauty. You know, he'd been working on this thing for a long time and he was pretty pumped to get over there and get stuck into it. I think he had some pretty good leads, um, which, you know, could have blown his career wide open. It was great. How's it look, mate? Mate, it looks pretty good. It ought to be the amount the repairs cost. Thanks, Tangles. Nice one. No more throwing cameras around stairwells. Yeah, look, I told you guys, not my fault, all right? Hey, um, are you happy to go handheld? The lighter we go, the quicker we move. Absolutely, mate. Are we going to China after all? More room for cheap DVDs, pirated software. <laughs> <laughs> You're all class, mate. It was purely John's decision to put Pete on the story. Well, I was a little uncomfortable with having Pete there to start with. Like I said before, we weren't exactly always gelling. I was really nervous about talking to Pete. I didn't want to tell him. not that exciting when you sort of building your hopes up for this great big story and then you sort of get given a shit sandwich. I thought at that point I was doing the right thing. I thought that Pete having to postpone what he had planned was worth it in the end for the story. He did say he went in to see John. I don't know what the uh, what happened in that room and the contents of that conversation. But um, yeah, he had spoken to John about it. And I think, um, you know, it was from that point on, it was clear he wasn't going to China and Nat had won the day. Well, 
why did John go the other way? Come on. We all know what John was favouring that, eh? Once Peter was on the story, we started attending the daily presses to try and find out what happened to the water recycling plans. And Pete was pissed off, but, you know, Pete's a pro. Took him a day or two, then he came round, just like the guy he is, you know. He started to do his own searching around. He had contacts in the council who he spoke to. And some rumours started to surface that not only were there homeless living in the tunnels, but there were homeless that were going missing. You know, at that point, we slowly started to think there may be something in this. So we just started by uh, chasing the then water minister. The main thing that was apparent that he was staying quiet on the topic. He wouldn't talk to us, no one would talk to us. So, you know, at that point, we were just getting stonewalled. If it was true that homeless were going missing, this was a big story. And it was a really important one. That's That's right. No comment. Minister, should people be worried? Is there a threat in the underground tunnel? No. All right. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think that definitely on a on quite a large scale, there was a lot of people in the government that knew what was going on. They knew what was going on down there. You know, with everything that's happened subsequently, they were hiding stuff. I started getting in contact with a few of the shelters around the city and eventually I came across one particular homeless man who I had believed had been living in the tunnels. Um, so this was, I mean, this was fantastic. We had finally someone to speak to. Come up, mm. I think I'm right with these. Right, Trevor. Mm. Uh, just one second, I've got a picture no, of mine. That's okay. Just don't. Jeez. He's right. obviously uh, a bit rough. I'm rough. not sure <laughs> how she found Trevor, but Natasha found Trevor. We went down to this home and we sat him down for an interview. Don't put too much pressure on him. Mm -hmm. So just let him. Yeah, sweet. Just. All right, mate. Head for it's 10 minutes it's too much pressure. Yeah, so yeah. just go with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, guys, cool. sweet. Trevor, if you don't feel comfortable with anything, you, you let me know at any time. Yeah, mate. And um, yeah, right. okay, when mate. I'm asking you the questions, if, yeah, you, if you're not you're quite, ready. if you're not quite sure of an answer, that's okay. We can fix it up later, so don't worry about that. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Well, the interview with Trevor was a tricky one, but something that I am, I guess, always quite accustomed to dealing with. Trevor, I understand you've been living at Rough. Call me Trev. Trev, mm. okay. Trev, I understand you've been living at Rough for quite some time now. What circumstances took you to living in the tunnels? Uh, well, it kept me and the mates warm in the winter. Yeah. It all started out great, chatting away to him. He started to tell me a little bit about, you know, his circumstances, what led him to live in the tunnels. He started to really paint a picture of what it was like there. and. Amongst your friends, Alfie and Johnny and Harry and, and some of the others, uh, do they still live down there now? No. Trevor? Hmm. Are you OK? Are you comfortable? Hmm. Yeah. Trevor, at that point in the interview, I asked Trevor what he perhaps had been through in the tunnels. I asked Trevor what he had seen. Clearly, something had happened to him. Trevor, did you know someone who went missing? Trevor, did anything happen to you down there? <laughs> Trevor. Are you all right? No!
After Trevor's interview, it was clear we were onto something. All the pieces of the puzzle were symptoms of something deeper, I just didn't know what. I needed more. We needed to get down there. Your call may be recorded for training purposes. Please advise your operator if you do not wish your call to be recorded. Oh, hi, Pam. It's Natasha Warner here. How are you? I'm well, Nat. And you? Yeah, good. Good, thanks. Look, I'm just wondering if you can help me out. I'm working on a story and I need to get into the tunnels under the CBD. Who do I need to talk to to make that happen? Right. What's the story? Oh, look, I just need half an hour. Um, just hang on a sec. Nat, sorry. I can't help you this time. What? Apparently no one's getting in there, and I don't think you'll be getting any special treatment. <laughs> Come on, Pam, it's me. Exactly. And people got burnt last time. I can't do it. I really need this. Pam, can you help me out? I'm sorry, Nat. Look, I just Bye. need help. I guess it's easier to look at it now and say that I was perhaps under a lot of pressure to get this story. At the time, I just, I felt I was doing my job. I was so focused on just doing my job. There was a lot of rumours kicking around. She was in big trouble and she kind of really needed to lift her game, otherwise she was gone. Well, I think that I'd put a lot of work into my career and I think it was all basically hanging on this one, one story. You know, I didn't really have a choice. Hey, Tangles, how's your head, mate? Pete, I'm like a fucking shark. As long as I keep moving, I'll be okay. <laughs> uh, here we go, this is what you look like. After Steve pulled you out of the loo last night. <laughs> oh, Steve, new toy. Mate, waterproof baby, ATG. All the gear. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Good at spending the network's money. It's okay. like, not just water resistant, it's fully waterproof. Yeah, waterproof, mate. Yeah, can you just roll up for me? Yeah, I'll uh, give it a bit of sound. There it is. Okay. Sure, mate. Oh, sweet. Rolling. Uh, great. I'm Pete, I'll just get you to uh, yeah, say some shit, shit together, a second. Mate. I'm there, hang on. One, two. Anyway, just say two. some shit to that. Some shit to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's very uh, excited to be going down the hey, smelly man. sewers. This hello, mm. how'd you go? Excuse me. I haven't got all the permits sorted, but um, John's got us covered, okay? Well, when Natasha said that John was covering us and we didn't have permits, that's kind of pretty loose arrangement. You know, you just sort of sit there and go, oh, well, we must be fine. You sure? Yeah. Alright. When? We're on for tonight. Tonight, okay. Yeah. So we are up? Yeah. Yep, yeah, tonight. Yeah. You good? Yep. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, man. Done. Thank you. Alright. It's gonna go the better, hey? Yep. As a crew, it's it's our job to film it and get coverage. It's It's really not our job to question it. Hey, Pete, just hang back. I'm just going to get a shot of Nat walking in. Filming. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Excuse me, guys. Guys, just hold up. Restricted area. Oh, so maybe, come back this maybe way. no one told you. We're just going to be filming for about half an hour. We'll be out of your hair. Just uh, grabbing a few shots. I'll need to see inside. Filming. Yeah, uh... We've got a permission to be done. You got a permit? We've got a driver's license. Uh, okay. 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 Pete, how much you got in your wallet? You're kidding me. Aren't you?
Is this, mate? Hey, we're not third world here. It's not going to work. Oh, Maybe. Guys, five, five everyone. There you go. Time to leave, please. Told you. Fucking hell. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Really not. Yeah. Really not. <laughs>
Okay, so that's that way. That's not here. I don't know why that is. Okay, through here. Yep, that must be the way. Once we got through and past the maintenance areas and we got into a little bit more of the guts of the tunnels, my impressions were that it was amazing. It was vast. This place was huge. That's awesome. All right. That sounds great. Pete, uh, Oh Ten minutes to grab some overlay here. Yeah, we'll give you five. Five? Yeah. Get we were very close to the station there, so, um, you know, Pete was trying to make us pretty low key. I was blown away by the size of it. It was massive and just eerie. You know, I think we're all in, in awe of it. It wasn't really difficult to get great looking shots down there, you know, because you're really just painting stuff with your light and whatever you saw there just was, it looked really cool. Okay, just get your weapon. Hey guys, just hush for a second. That was good. Yeah, sweet. The history to these tunnels, the ones in particular that we were looking at, was just incredible. I mean, it dates back pre-World War II. They they were to be used as an underground rail system. Then in World War II, they were used as air raid shelters. Come have a look at this. The current New South Wales government is not the first to use these tunnels for another purpose. I'm standing in a section of tunnel that was converted into an air raid shelter during World War II. It's complete with all the amenities that enabled soldiers to stay for extended periods. Various rooms were then um, reused in, in fashion for training for the SAS. So time and time again, they've, I guess, been reinvented for their use and even to this day with the water recycling plans that were announced. I was fortunate enough to come across an area where it was evident that there was definitely, you know, homeless or, you know, people living down there. That's good. Good bit too. We right, Tara? Uh, hang on a sec. Go when you're ready. We've been walking in the tunnel for less than an hour and already we've come across somebody's home. Here you can see their makeshift bed, blanket and empty tins of food. Coming across the belongings was very important. It was vital to the story. It was absolute proof that there was life down here. While there is no sign of an occupant at the moment, it is clear the minister's assertions of abandoned tunnels are incorrect. This was something that the government were denying. And this is something that we could now prove. Hey, Nat, I'll get, you, I'll get a shot of you going down there, actually. Yeah. So, hang on. Oh, hey. hey. Light. Oh. Jeez. Right. Beautiful. Hey, what's up? Oh, nothing. It's a bit tight down there, Tubby. You reckon you're going to make it? He mustn't like working on this show. Matt, 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 you all right? You all right? Okay. Yeah, I'm right. Do you need a hand? No, I'm fine. Oh, yes, do. Move on. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Nat? Yes. Look, we've got, already got the sleeping bags and stuff. We don't really need to get the lake. We hey, could probably do the rest up hey, here. Hey, I'm alright. Okay? I'm fine. Little... Just let's keep going. Alright, can you take that? What's hanging there? 
Oh, she just really needs the story. After what happened last time, she's treading on thin ice. Yeah, I reckon. That's why John put me on to this, make sure she doesn't fuck up again. Mate, if she's not up to it, why doesn't he give her the ass? Well, mate, I think John would want to give her a little bit more than just that. Well, he'd have to get a line behind you, wouldn't he? Hey, guys. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, you might want to know for future reference that these tunnels carry sound pretty well. And as far as I can hear, you're all assholes. <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah, give me the torch. Right. <clears throat> there you go, mate. So, get down there, you asshole. <laughs> Uh, Pete, can you just lift that handle up for me? Get a bit of sound. Where to? Just. It's pretty cool. Yeah, nice. Give it a kick. Yeah, give it a kick. Yeah, so you want to jump Send in? Send it on its way. What are we doing? Just let's give just it give kick. it a kick. You can right. track it for sound. You call it. Vamos, do esto es cuatro. Thanks, guys. The lake was just so vast. I mean, this thing runs a kilometre long. It's bigger than I thought. Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> well, me and Tangles were mucking around a bit and we like to uh, play jokes on each other. And, uh, you know, if I didn't do it, he would have done it. So I just grabbed him and sort of went, you know, at the edge of the lake, went to push him in and, you know, how you grow up, sort of hold on to their shoulders and pull them back again, which I did. And then I let go of him and went to walk back to the camera. In he went. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Tangles, are you right? Yes. <laughs> There's your dip, mate. Steve, you're really Steve, you're <laughs> yeah. Boy, this is not funny. It's fucking cold. Are you going to give him a hand? No, nah, fuck him. <laughs> oh, God. Shit. This is not to stop laughing, OK? Well, how long are we going to be down here, right? Tangles, as much as we used to joke around and muck around together, when it came time to work, it was very, you know, he was very serious and it wasn't time for joking. Creative department's ready yet. Yeah. Right. Just let you know. Okay. Nat, just come forward a fraction. So, you know, when he's sort of giving me the impression that there were problems, I was believing him. I'm standing directly below one of Sydney's busiest train stations. Behind me is the forgotten water resource that's causing all the controversy. Earlier this year, the no, government... Sorry. Sorry, Pete, are you making noise? No. <clears throat> you want whispering? No. All right, sorry, Nat, can we go from the top? Everyone, just keep it quiet. Thank you. Come on, let's go from the top again. Yeah. Let's move. When you're ready, Nat. I'm standing directly below one of Sydney's busiest train stations. Behind me is the forgotten water no, resource sorry. that's caused... Are you guys fucking with me? What's the noise? No, what are you hearing, mate? It's... Hang on, just check the battery. Sweet. Um... I don't know. Maybe it's your cables. Yeah, cables don't fucking talk, Steve. Uh, all right. Sorry, Nat. Um, go for it again. I'll see what I can do. Just go straight through. If Tangles says he heard something, I, I do believe that he felt he heard something. I can't describe how silent the place was, so at the time I, I didn't feel that he could have been hearing anything. It, it was strange. I was just thinking... You know, it could have been a technical problem, could have been anything, some RF interference, anything like that. But, you know, Tangles was adamant there was something going on and uh, when he's serious about something, you know, you, you believe him. Earlier this year, the government announced then quietly abandoned plans to recycle water from this lake. The Minister for Water is yet to give a reason why. Beautiful. Pete, happy? I'm happy. How are you, Tangles? Oh, yeah, yeah, sweet. Yeah. Yeah? All right, let's go. Let's move. Grab the sticks. Go. Yeah. All right, let's go. After we'd finished our piece at the lake, um, we decided to head for the bell room. 
Right on that. Basically, the bell room was built as, I guess, a air raid sort of alert back in the war. They would use it to warn people of danger. Uh, yep, sweet. When we rang the bell, it was deafening. It rattled your ribs. This bell is a relic of World War II. It remains here in the confines of an air raid shelter as a reminder of what imminent danger sounds like. That blew my levels right off the meter, sorry. Um, hang on, Nat, can you just hit the bell once more? Yep, right again. Yep. How's that? Nah, uh, look, if you want me to get that, it's probably best I'm going from down the hall. Yeah, okay, well, you want it? If we need it, yeah. Okay, cool, two seconds. Right. Tangles decided to um, go into the adjoining room off the bell room and boom it from there just to basically kill the the sound of the, the level of the bell, um, which was just making his levels peak out. I don't really know much about recording sound, um, but I did at the time remember thinking, eh, that's a bit weird, you know, why would you do that? Just turn it, turn it down a little bit. Surely it's that simple. Uh, Steve, can you do me a favour? Can you just listen on the cans, watch the levels for me? Uh, why don't you get Pete to do it? He can do camera, he must be able to do sound. No, nah, mate, I've done enough hard work today. Yeah. That's good, Nat. Yeah, I'll do it for you, mate. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, it's just way too echoing here. He asked me to listen right. to the audio for him, which is fine. It's just put on the headphones and, and listen to it as it's being recorded. Right. Oh, here, yeah. Sangles. What? Oh, take that. Thanks very much. And then so Nat just went ahead and did it again, and uh, that's... That's when, uh, that's when I heard it. Yeah, Bell out, Moss. Maybe ready now. something wrong. I knew he wasn't mucking around. My initial thought was just to get to him. It wasn't unlike them. So I guess my first instinct was that they were having a joke. What, Nat thought we were playing a prank, did she? You spoken to her? She thought we were fucking around. Uh, yep, ready to go. Through. That's a dead end. Tangles! Watch your step. Tangles! Oh, Great. what's up? Battery. You right? Yeah. Is that right? Need the light? Yeah, it's in here. Yeah, it's in here. Hang on. 
it became pretty evident quite quickly that we weren't going to be able to find anyone or anything without light. Go ahead. We'll get him, mate. We'll find him. We'll find him, all right? Tangles! Now, I, I had my camera light, and I knew I had about two, maybe three hours tops worth of light. Steve, where's your kid? Tangles! Steve, Steve. Steve, where's your kid? Yeah, yeah. What? Where's what? your kid? He's back in the bell ring. OK, well, all the torches are back there, aren't they? This is the only light you got. It's fucking around. Yeah. Well, we, got, we need the torches, mate. We've got to go back to the bell ring. Right, tangles. It's all right. We got it. We'll get him. We'll find him. Come on. Come on. Walked back into the bell room, and there was nothing. There was nothing there. All the stuff had disappeared. Now, that was only in the matter of, I don't know, it couldn't have been too long. Shit, everything's gone. What? What the hell's going on? Certainly raised some concern, because I didn't feel it was something that Tangles could do by himself. Hey, we're wasting time, guys. Let's go. Wait, come on. Oh, yeah, take this. Pete, just give me some light, Steve. OK. OK, Tangles went through here. If we follow that all the way around, it brings us back to this room. We can scan the whole area. OK, so we split up and we'll be back here, yeah? No, we stick together. That's the only light we've got. How many batteries you got left? I got two in my pouch, mate. OK, let's go. Steve. Steve! Oh, fuck. It won't do Tangles any good if we run around like headless trooks. We stick together, all right? You better keep up there. Tangles! Wait, wait. Come on now. Tangles! Yeah, I panicked. You know, it wasn't like I'm trying to be a hero or anything. I just, you know, the smarter thing might have been to do something else, but it's just instinct it was kicking in. Tangles! So what do you think? Think of what? No, Tangles, is he dicking around? No. No, you wouldn't dick around for this long. Who took our stuff then? Who took it? I don't know. Remember the homeless junkies? I heard it, Pete. You heard what? Whatever it was, mate. Well, what was it, mate? Steve. Look, let's just keep going, okay? Steve. Steve, what was it? What you say? What's in here? Fuck. Oh, fuck. No. You right? You right? <laughs> No, nothing. Pete, we've been in here twice before, mate. The only other place has got to be the lake. Or oh, maybe he went back in where we came. Maybe he's waiting for us. Oh, yeah, sure, mate. He's fucking walked out in the pitch black. He's at fucking Harry scoffing no, a pie. No, I don't mean that. I mean, he can't contact us. Maybe no, no, he's no, out there waiting right. for us. Okay, Tangles is down here. He's got to be at the lake, mate. Well, how much light you got? Got enough. All right then. Shh. Do you hear that? Shh. Shh. Fuck. Let's go. Go. Tangles. Just a... Shh. Tangles. Oh. This way. Tangles. He's got to be. I heard him through here. Tangles. I'm coming, mate! Oh, fuck it. In here! He's... He's... Take us a hand, quick. Get down the ground, get to the bottom. Fuck it! Get it off! Get it open! Grab that hat. Come back. Oh, shit. Hey. Steve, why?
Steve. Yeah. It's torture. It's his torture, but it doesn't mean it's him, mate. I can't really describe it. It was just... There was blood and... Over in the corner was Tangle's torch. I, I sort of thought of myself as his older brother. You know, that was the kind of relationship we had. And uh, he was sort of entrusted to me. That's the way I felt about it. Let's go. Good man, anyone. Come on, we've got to move. She's right. He could be close, mate. That tangles. Whatever that fucking thing is, it could be. It's nearby. Come on. There's a tangles. Come on. Let's go. Where's my camera? It's over there. It's not where I left it. What? It's not where I left it. Before we went into the room, Nat put the camera, the night vision camera on the ground just outside the door. Um, and then we went into the room, we would have been in there for more than two or three minutes and then she came out and we all came out together and she noticed the camera had been moved. My instinct was to, to check it and, and see if it had recorded something. What? Play it back. back the footage and uh, was someone had picked up the camera yeah. it had come off the ground and it was shots of us in the room And then we turn to come out and the camera goes down and we just catch a glimpse, it's like one frame. It happened in a split second. I didn't know what it was, mate, but it was quick and it was fucking frightening. Fucking leaving him down here with whatever the fuck Steve, that was. Right now, I'm not fucking listen, leaving listen him. Listen to me. Right now, my priority is with you and that. I'm not gonna let what happened to Tangles happen to both of you, alright? We have to get out of him, we have to get to the top. Come on. Mate, you go, go, go on, on your own. Let's Leave go. me here. I don't Steve, give a shit. Your life. Come on. You got your this own fucking life. Listen mate. to Take me. Take off. Oh, listen to me. Fuck listen off. to me. I'm not don't listen. Fucking touch okay, me, listen, man. listen, listen. Fuck. Listen. Listen to me. Whatever that fucking thing is. It's going to have a harder time taking us out if we stick together. That's bullshit. Listen, listen. We need to get to the top. We need to get help. If we get more help down, the better chance we're going to find Tangles. <sighs> Fucking Tangles, man. I know, man. Hey, man. 
I'm with you. I'm with you. Come on. Come on. Heat made sense, but I couldn't help but feel like I was leaving tangles behind. It was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. CK? Just give him a few minutes. He's right. So what's the plan? I'll get the fuck out of here is the plan. Get back to the top. What? I think we should stay and look for tangles. You don't need for tangles. You don't need for tangles. guys not to come down no, look, here. No, no, we're sorry. It's just our friend. He's gone missing. Someone, something's taken him. Right. I want all of you to come with me now. Hey. Come on. Mate, what's happening here? Mate. Give it a break. Tell us what's happening here. We're leaving. Hey. Is he going to help us? Go. <laughs> something when we're running. It's fine. Shit, Steve. Looks bad. Uh. Here, Pete. I need to see. Yeah, yeah. Could you show me? Fuck her. Doesn't look good enough. There it is. You got it. Steve. Yeah, you're 
Alright, mate. Yeah, mate. Yeah, I'm good. Alright, let's go. Just keep it quiet. Hey, come in, the camera. Send someone down to find us. John knows we're here, right? No. Oh, fucking tell me John knows we're here. Oh, you're fucking kidding me. I can't. Are you fucking serious? I need, I needed you. I knew it. I needed you guys. Fuck, you need us? Yeah. We just lost a friend. You still need your fucking story? No. Huh? Fuck you. Fuck you! Put your voice down. You think you're a fucking journalist? Well, we came down here to get a story, didn't we? And now we've got an important one, and you're fucking running scared! What's your fucking story? Yeah? You want your piece to camera? Come on. Let's go. What's your piece to camera for this one, huh? Do you want to tell us how, how you lost a friend? Because you're fucking stupidity. Come on. Wait him. Come on, man. Come on. The best journalist can work under any pressure, any sort of circumstance. Come on. You see, you can't say shit, can you? You know why? Because you're not there, no. You're just not there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
was because of me. I never meant for things to get so out of hand. Well, I didn't mean to let Pete down. I mean, I... I had thought I'd made the right choice at the time and I didn't mean to let him down. natural instinct was to turn around with the light to see what was going on. We just heard this sound, Pete yelling out. And uh, as soon as they sort of fell into the pool of light, the thing just disappeared up and left. And that was sort of dawned on me then that the light was our way of keeping it away from us. Come on. Okay. Come on. It's fucked. Did you see that? It took off. Let's get out of here. Let's go. 
He didn't like the light. We'll keep it on then. Hold on. Now. get us in a position where it could get to us as well. It reminded me of a lion trying to cut one animal out of a pack, a herd. You know, get the weak one out, easy to attack. I thought that was it. It was over. There was nowhere left to run. Then I saw this tiny bit of wall that looked like it had broken away. Hey, take, take this, take this. Take it! Oh, oh shit. Get her hand, Pete. Oh, yeah. Come on. This isn't good. Steve. Steve, isn't that... God. This isn't good.
looking out for us and I didn't want to leave him there. <laughs> Pete wanted us to be safe. I understand that, but I don't I don't want to leave Pete behind. When I heard 
Pete's voice coming down that tunnel out of the darkness. Uh, I mean, I wasn't expecting to hear his voice again. To, to talk about it now. I, I didn't know he was dying at that point. You know, I thought we were all going to be fine. I mean, it had been so difficult to get to that point where we got there. And then, you know, I thought we were going to be OK. There was people around us, there was light. I, you know, I, I would have been doing more if I thought he was lying there dying. But I feel like that I could have done more to help Pete. You know, it's um, it's easy to say that you would do things differently, you know. It just didn't seem very fair. I got told by the first paramedics that, you know, they'd sort of given up working on him. They've sort of... You know, it took a while for them to, to get Nat away from him. And uh, it slowly, slowly dawned on me at about that point. You know, they sort of walked away from him. And he was just lying that he wasn't moving. And I was just thought, fuck. I feel, I've, I feel responsible. I don't want to say that I felt like it was my fault. exactly how I've changed since that night. I can't help thinking we were so close. Help was right there. I go over it again and again. Just constantly. What would I do differently?
I was just pissed off with everyone, everything, the government, the police. I mean, how much evidence do you want? It's just sad now thinking about it. It's pointless. It's just fucking sad.